Hey guys, it's Callus. It's Callus Crew Challenge 2, round of 8, and this is going to be the final match on YouTube of this round. It is the David versus Goliath match of the round, or in this case, Danielle versus Goliath. Crying is a lady, I am told. And <laughs> quite the task in front of her here. Conflict has been playing GSC for over a decade. It's his main. He's one of the most successful SPL GSC players. Going to be very hard to get the win here, but that's what needs to happen if the Cryos B team is to advance here over the Gator Guild. We saw Ima take out Vileman in RBY, which was not the outcome that a lot of you guys expected. Crystal took out X-Ray in a tight DPP set. Both of those sets are on YouTube if you want to go back and check them out if you haven't already. And that leads us here. The other opponent in the semifinals in their side of the bracket has been decided for a day or two now. It's going to be Quint and company against whoever wins here. Just got to figure out, is it Cryos B team or is it Gator Guild? This GSC best of three will determine that. Here is the game. Game one of a best of three. Crying's on the bottom. Conflict's on the top. They both have a lax and they both stay in. Double edge for both. Pretty standard stuff on turn one. Double edge again. Playing it aggressive. Man, uh, this, this could go poorly here. Speed tie, very important. And, ooh, Crying got to risk it there. Imagine if Conflict had stayed in and gone for DE and won the speed tie, but works out just fine. Uh, toxic landing on Lax there doesn't matter. It's clearly going to rest, but the key thing is that Spikes got down, and now Crying is going to get hers down as well. So Spikes for both players as Gollum comes in and threatens to spin them away, but Ghost comes in immediately for Conflict before Gollum can even attempt it. And they're going to trade Toxic and EQ, respectively, which is probably a better trade for Conflict, but the damage on Missy could potentially matter. EQ, they're trying to kill Missy, is going to find Cloyster instead. And there's a guard just in case that goes for Rapid Spin, which it does. So they have both brought Spin Protection in the form of a Ghost. Different Ghosts, though. Mystery Bus and Gengar function quite differently in this gen. Sue, Starmie comes in. And again, it is a blocked rapid spin attempt as Crying doubles back to Gar. Protect and hidden power. Don't know what hidden power it is. Here comes Lax coming in on the spike. And a nice punch for just 14%. Not a problem. Lax doing fine. Zapdos comes in. Sleep talk rest. And now Thunder going to connect. 31% is an okay chunk. Sleep Talk finds Earthquake there, which is certainly good information for Crying to be aware of. Gollum and Gar both don't want to be on the bad end of that. So what is the set? Double Edge, Sleep Talk EQ, and Rest. Fair enough. Stally team for Conflict as we see Blissey make an appearance here. Exclusively a Stallmon. And Heal Bell is going to remove lots of those problems. Skarm comes in. So, yep, good old, good old Skarm, Bliss, Spikes, and Ghost. Same strategy that is very good at the core of Gen 3. Obviously, looks a little different here, but the base concept, best special wall, best physical wall, Spiker, and something to protect the Spikes, the base concept is the same. There is the Surf coming down and a T-Bolt, which is obviously going to be able to pop the sub. And T-Bolt on Lax, a lot less exciting, just 11%. Uh, from Crying's Lax, we've only seen Double Legend Rest. Hey, maybe she's got the same set as Conflict. Yet to be determined. But Blissey's going to wall that Zapdos over and over and... You could just tell looking at the teams that this one, uh, grab a drink, boys and gals. We are, uh, we're probably going long. We're probably in for a longer one here.
Sleep Talk Double Edge. So three of the moves in common with Conflicts. Don't know if the last move is EQ or not. Maybe we'll see. Could just be Curse. Pretty common. Warwind is going to prompt out Gar. Still haven't seen the last for Conflict, but it doesn't matter. It's clearly a very stally team, regardless of what the last poke is. There are opportunities like that that normally would break the game open. You know, you freeze the lax there and never thaws, but in this case, that won't even be a thing because Blissey has Heal Bell. So even that wouldn't be enough in this case. Yeah, this one's going to be a grind. I, I very well... You know, not trying to plow through it given the importance of the game, but if this one ends up going really long, it may end up at some point putting this on a faster speed. I think we, I, I think we're in for a grind. Rest coming down and rest again. EQ. Nope. And Thunder. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard to to kill anything, really. Uh, it looks like two teams that wall each other pretty well. And stuff like Machamp, stuff like Jinx, those kind of breakers. Stuff like Nitto King, Titar. Just really aggressive mixed breakers. Not seeing him here. Nightmare. I mean, cute tech back in the day, but well known about now. And is just going to prompt a switch. It's not going to be the be-all, end-all here. Wakey, wakey, double edge. There are opportunities for conflict here. A critical hit, for example, in any of these double edge turns, killing the Starmie would... Certainly speed things up in Conflict's direction. This particular set could be problematic because normally normally Gengar Golem can handle Lax reasonably well, but I guess the one of the structural problems of having those together is the residual, or sorry, the overlapping, the redundant... Earthquake weakness. I said residual, I meant redundant, but they're both EQ weak. Uh, so when you happen to have this set of lax, two pokes that normally would be okay against lax are both actually bad against it. And I guess that makes it awkward. I guess ultimately crying does not have a fantastic switch into this specific set of lax that conflict has. Uh, anything, any of the ones that don't care about Earthquake, are vulnerable to Double Edge and vice versa. So with a crit, with the right move on the right Mon, Conflict does threaten at any time to pop somebody. So that's probably one of the bigger advantages. And like I said, the other problem, and we now do finally know the, fi the full set for Crying's Lax, having shown Flamethrower there. But the other problem, like I said, is that if Crying does, like let's say she got a burn there, or... She does Ice Punch and, you know, freeze the Zapdos, freeze the Lax, whatever. It's not going to be that impactful because of Heal Bell, which Conflict is going to not just, you know, pop meaninglessly to wake one thing up from rest or whatever. He's going to save it for when he gets value or for when it matters. Now, if you freeze the Blissey, that's different, obviously, because it doesn't have Natural Cure and it can't Heal Bell itself while it's frozen, so... Maybe that's the way out for crying. Maybe you freeze the bliss itself rather than one of the other pokes. But yeah, this really this has potential to really be a, a lengthier game. Crying there avoided getting its lax, her lax pain split, and it ended up being a split with Zapdos instead, which still gained the Missy some HP, but not a ton. Back to Missy here for Conflict, and Crying's going to kill a Sleep Turn. She's going to go back to Zap here, and it's going to be another Pain Split, so Missy back up to almost full health. And as we know, Blissey, not to be confused with Missy, uh, is going to wall this Zapdos for days and days and days. Laxarino and Thunderbolt. 
Here comes Miss. And Zapdos. They're going to split their pain. There's Bliss. Yeah. I think we might be going long. I think I might think I might make the executive decision. Hyper fast might be a stretch, but let's uh we've been narrating on normal up to this point. Let's go ahead and at least move it to fast and see see if we get anywhere cuz th this one is really looking like a grind. The fact that there's multiple pokes for conflict that have thunderbolt and they happen to be against Starmie here is I I don't know if that's by design or just a nice coincidence for conflict, but certainly makes it more difficult for crying and makes the makes the Starmie not as effective as it otherwise could be. Thunderbolt for both Blissey and Missy uh, and Zapt. <laughs> so a lot of T bolts on the other side. Starmie really and truly not all that exciting in this matchup. It is quite walled and quite threatened as it turns out. So yeah, I think this is going to take a, a hot minute, but all things considered, uh, looking at the team configurations, looking at the sets for everybody, you know, looking at the specific dynamic of, you know, what are the outs here, what could either player fish for, I think that Conflict is likely going to win this first game. Uh, I don't think that it is absolutely no matter what stone cold over here and anybody's wasting our time by not forfeiting or anything like that but i feel pretty confident that conflict's going to eventually get this one it, it it's looking like it's going to take a minute i'm glad i switched it over to fast it's not a short game but i, I feel quite confident in my ultimate assessment that conflict will get this it just feels too difficult for crying to break through. Uh, we've been watching for the past, however, you know, 70 something turns where crying really hasn't been able to get any meaningful offense going at all. If you look at the entirety of Conflict's team 90, 91, 72, 94, 89, 100. Everything's very healthy for Conflict. It just, it feels like crying is not gaining any momentum or putting any meaningful pressure anything that she does gets walled that's the problem conflict's team is well built and i think he's stumbled into a pretty good matchup as well it just feels very difficult for crying to break through gonna need multiple pieces of hacks probably or to freeze the blissey itself and then go from there but yeah save something like that Conflict just never really seems under siege. Not that Conflict's team is like super offensive and putting a bazillion points of pressure on crying either, but I can see how Conflict wins without outrageous hacks, whereas I don't see how crying really wins this game without quite a few pieces of relevant hacks. Conflict can and is slowly chipping away at crying's defenses and eventually should be able to break them. Maybe if the boom there had connected with the lax, but conflict is never going to allow that to happen. The boom happens on Skarm, and that is the first knockout over 100 turns into it. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can always play for a throw by your opponent, right? Had conflict allowed the lax to die there, or, I mean, heaven forbid, let the blissey take it there. Maybe crying has a path, but... With it just connecting with the Skarm that we know has rest, so that boom damage is going to be completely negated at some point down the line. Meh. Yeah, I, I feel confident that Conflict has this one. I really do. No bias here. I, I don't care who wins. I, I don't even really know crying at all, basically. Uh, and Conflict, I have known for a long time, but I mean, I'm, I'm neutral. I respect both these teams. I like both these teams. Both squads have... Players that I'm fond of, I'd be happy for either team making it through the semifinals. I'm just, uh, you know, with no bias and no preference attached, I'm just calling it as I see it. And 
It's felt to me for quite a while now and still does like conflict is going to win this game. And I certainly always have respect for players doing what crying's doing, playing it out and not giving it up until you are absolutely dead. If there's a small chance, if you are, I mean, I don't like when players waste other people's time, but if there's a small chance to win, if you need to get there, if it requires specific hacks, of course you play for it. Of course you do. Don't give up. Don't be a wimp. Play it out. But, yeah, the dominoes were starting to come down finally at the end. It didn't take as long as I thought it might. It was still not a quick game at 125 turns. But the outcome in that one really didn't feel too, too in doubt. It is going to be a conflict victory here pretty convincingly. This very well may have been a 6-0 had it played out. And that's going to be one game away from the top four for the Gator Guild. Crying is going to have to rattle off two in a row against Conflict in order to send the Cryos B team, an underdog squad on paper, into the top four. Here's the second game. I won't give you guys this feel again. I already gave you the gist, but like I said, right now, poof, like button. Appreciate it. Done and done. Here we go. Game two. Crying is on the bottom, Conflict's on the top, Standard leads, Zapdos and Lax, good turn one for Crying with an immediate Thunder crit. Double Edge comes back, Thunder again, and it's going to miss, but it wouldn't have mattered there unless a crit again or it parried full parried. Any other circumstance, the Lex, the, Lex, the rest from the Lax, I combine the words, would have happened there and it would all be for naught. Sleep Talk Surf for Conflict. We saw that earlier in the ABR set. And Cloyster does manage to establish a spike for Crying. She's going to keep her Cloyster in, go for Surf. Double Edge going to come down here. And there's a boom. That's got to be a good trade. Trading one for one, anything with Lax has to favor the player that doesn't lose their Lax. Good turn for Crying. Not only does she have the spike up, but she also manages to trade a good poke, for sure. A damn good poke, but for the best poke. So good start for crying in this one. Quagsire coming for Conflict. It learns Belly Drum in this generation. See if Conflict's trying to get that going. Executor threatening a 4x weak Giga Drain. It's not a bluff. That is exactly what it goes for. Is going to, of course, prompt the Quagsire out. And now Titar is going to come in. Double Electric Squad for Crying. No spinner shown yet for Conflict. Certainly doesn't mean he doesn't have one. There's EQ connecting with Raikou. And now Golem comes in, which is interesting because EQ is the most probable move. So it comes into a super effective 45% or 46% rather EQ. Failed Protect. More switching for Crying. More protecting for Conflict. But he's A-OK -okay with that. He's just leftying up. Here comes Fori. That comes in on EQ. Very well may have Rapid Spin or Giga Drain here, but the standard play would just be to click Spikes. Going to go for Rapid Spin, though. Value's getting rid of the Spike at this moment more than establishing his own Spike. And he's going to Protect here. Misses an opportunity to put his own Spikes down. And probably going to have to miss him until he knows that the Executor doesn't have HP Fire, which currently he does not know that. And good thing he doesn't risk it because it gets shown right there. That would have cooked the Fori had it stayed in. So, leaves us in a 5-5. Five to five. And that is with the full team now revealed for crying. Hidden poke in the back for conflict. Not anymore. It's Skarm. So, everybody knows everybody. All cards on the table. Full squads revealed for both players. Raikou comes into a Toxic, but not a big deal. Can just rest that away as well as the damage that's on it. But it's a good double for Crying, getting her Executor into the Quagsire and making a good play here. Going HP Fire, predicting the Skarm. Now Toxic comes down. And a troll damage roll there. Did 52% last time, but just 45% that time with a slightly better roll. Crying would have picked off Skarmory there, so... Good sequencing, not rewarded for her good play, but I definitely like what I see in the past couple turns from Crying. Putting up a good fight in this one, without a doubt, though she is going to play the rest of the game without the spike down. Ever since that rapid spin got down, remember, she did blow up her cloister trade with the Lax, which was definitely good, but 
Not going to have the spike for the rest of the game now that it's been spun away. This one's close, and in theory, this one shouldn't be as long as the previous. Crying going to curse up with her lax as Fori comes in. fori has got to be careful to not let it curse up too many times. EQ for immediate pressure. And here's Skarm, which is generally a pretty good counter, but it is asleep. Double edge. Hey, there, there's a crit. Very relevant crit, in fact. Conflict now may be in some danger. Has to go back to Fori here. And there's the obligatory double edge, but both steals for Conflict pretty low in the red. Rapid spin and double edge. Conflict loses Fori and Crying takes the lead. Quagsire now going to be the answer. Will it begin to belly drum here? Might have to. Toxic there. Whiffing. Yeah, really good play this game from Crying. That's a good trade as well. Boom taking out Zapdos. I don't know if that was the intended target or not. It very well may have been, but that was another good trade. Crying doing a lot of things right here, and I think that she's in a good position to send us to a game three. Got the 4-3 edge here. These hidden powers are not that exciting, but it is preventing Quagsire from being able to safely belly drum, so I understand why it's happening. She's going to opt to rest at this point, and so is Conflict. He's shown Toxic EQ Rest. He actually might not be a belly drum set, but it could be last move belly drum. Certainly doesn't look like the set based on the fact that Toxic is there. Hidden power going to come down. And we're going to go for EQ. Not clear if that was a prediction or just lack of something better to do. Toxic comes down again. Yeah, the hidden powers are underwhelming. Just 23%. Quagsire tanking the electrics pretty good. That is one of its niches in this gen. Nobody runs HP Grass because Swampert is just not as ubiquitous and important as it is in ADV. Nobody targets Quagsire with HP Grass, so yeah, it walls both Raikou and Zapdos quite efficiently. And Crying gets the Golem in there on the Quagsire that could have just clicked Stab EQ, but correctly identifies that it was going to be a rest turn. As such, she earns herself a Rapid Spin, and the spikes are gone. Now the Boom there... Uh, maybe... Maybe it, it really, it really depends on, on what you what you're afraid of. I mean, I guess if you, if the Skarm was the intended target and you've calculated that you could beat these other two dweebs, then, then I guess that's fine. I'm always weird. It always it always makes me a little uncomfortable when the thing booming is like super duper healthy and clearly doesn't need to, and the thing that's booming into is super duper low that always feels backwards it always feels like it's supposed to be your dude at like 30 percent booming on the thing that's really healthy it always feels possibly premature in reverse but like i said if crying has decided that if she takes out the skarm she's gonna be able to win from there then i trust her and she might be right this oh Oh, man. That feels like such a blunder, though. Ooh. I don't know about the double edge, though. Why not... I, I, oh, man. Well, I guess she didn't have the option to rest, huh? Mmm. I, I don't know. I liked it until that moment, but now... Now I don't know how well crying breaks through Quagsire... She's got just her two electrics, which are two of the best mons in the tier, without a doubt, but happens to be this rest quagsire on the other side that might be particularly difficult. And it also has Sleep Talk EQ, which right there, had that happened, could have just killed Raikou. I don't know. I, I liked Crying's position in this game up until the Lax just died. Now, all of a sudden, at 2v2... I'm not so sure. Uh, the Quagsire seems tough to break. 45% hidden power is not bad, but it's not amazing either. 
EQ trying to snipe Raikou there. Hidden power. It gets a crit, but doesn't get the roll. That's the second time that had the roll just been a little better, something of conflicts would have been dead and it would have changed the game dramatically. Sleep Talk finds EQ there too, which is exactly what he needs. Now it's only Zapdos against both Titar and Quagsire. I don't know where exactly this went wrong. If I had to look at one turn and scratch my head, maybe it's the boom on the Skarmory. But all of a sudden, it looks like Conflict's in good shape here. I don't know that Crying can win anymore. This might just be a PP stall. and I mean, I can... Let me check the health of the T-Tar here. No, never mind. Here it comes. 51 after lefties here. And Protect, as it should. And then back to Quag. Let's see. Quagsire. You can't see it. It's off the screen, but... 13 and 2 is 15, plus 11 is 26, plus 5 is 31, and Zapdos 24, 32, 39. Yeah, I don't know. I think Zapdos often gets PP stalled out here. I, I think it's going to go to struggle first, and then I think between the two mons for Conflict, he's going to be able to clean it up. So I think Conflict's going to take this 2-0 and put Gator Guild into the top four. I, I liked Crying's position throughout most of the game. I thought that she was ahead through most of this. I feel like she had a couple turns where she outplayed Conflict. I thought that she was a damage roll away on two different occasions from getting kills that absolutely we now know would have been very important had they connected. I think Crying did a lot of things right and looked like a solid, respectable GSC player here. Uh, but, uh, here, here's the but, and it's big, like big butts, and I cannot lie, uh, it's it's just not going to be enough. Somehow, some way, the German veteran who's been playing this tier uh, forever looks like he's going to take it down. Crying is not conceding. Maybe she needs multiple crits in a row, and that's what she's playing for. But ultimately, the only thing the Zapdos has that can even touch the Quagsire is Hidden Power. That's the issue here. Hidden Power, finite PP. And Zapdos can and will get PP stalled out here. They're going through the motions. They're both just sleep talking while they're not asleep. But if I did my math correctly... It looks to me like Zapdos will lose this PP war. I'll check one more time. 15 and 14. And that's to say nothing of the T-Tar in the back. And that's the concession. That one, a bit of a heartbreaker for crying. It felt like she could have won this game. Arguably deserved to win this game. Was so close, but just didn't get it done at the end. Now, granted, let's keep the obvious in mind that even if Crying had won this game, she would have to win a game three, which is far from guaranteed. But it definitely felt like Crying could have won at least this game and forced that game three. But as it stands, it is going to be what you guys expected, even though Crying definitely looked good and held her own here. It is going to be a 2-0 victory for Conflict. And that's going to be a 2-1 series victory for the Gator Guild over the Cryos B team. And that's going to set up a semi-final match between the Gator Guild and Quint and Company. On the other side of the bracket, we are still waiting on the final match between Fake Booty and Pax on Stacks. It's going to be whoever wins in that set against the Time Zone Warriors as our other semi-final match. But because the match that we're waiting on is that Gen 8 match, and I haven't been doing Fairy Gens, like I said, this will be the last match of this round on YouTube. So for all intents and purposes, I will see you guys in the semifinals. But I remind you one final time, please consider donating to the tour. If I have provided you guys with $5, $10 worth of entertainment throughout this whole damn tour, Please consider showing me that by donating. It's not for my benefit. It's for the players. I'm not keeping the money. Please do consider donating if you have the means. Discord link is in the description. 
I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. I have a small audience, but I have a really cool, really appreciative audience, and I do this all for you. I will see you guys in the semifinals.